You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about productivity. I've been doing a series of special live streams for patrons about life-changing ideas in which I've been talking about the books and the ideas that have really influenced me and that I think are extremely valuable. And recently I did one about the idea of having a productivity system and specifically about the ideas in the book Getting Things Done by David Allen, but more generally about the idea of productivity. And in this episode, I'm going to play you some parts of that live stream discussion. And the parts I'm sharing in this episode are about the relevance of productivity for your life as a whole. The rest of this live stream is available in this week's bonus episode for patrons and bitbackers at the Rockstar Entrepreneur tier and above. And in that bonus episode, you can hear all about my productivity system, the apps that I'm using at the moment, and lots of other good stuff about productivity. You can get access to that discussion and other bonus episodes by becoming a patron on Patreon or a backer on Bitbacker. And you can find out more about that on my website, thevoluntarylife.com or by going directly to my Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash thevoluntarylife. I just want to say a quick thank you to my new patron, Christopher B. And now, without further delay, here's the discussion about productivity applied to your whole life. I explained my approach to why I'm so interested in productivity in an episode called Why I'm Passionate About Productivity, which you can find. It was about a year ago, that episode. I won't repeat everything that I said there, but... I do want to make some points about why I've chosen this book, Getting Things Done, as something I think is a really great topic to do in this series. Getting Things Done itself has a lot of really practical advice in the book about getting control of your life in terms of managing all the data. And it also has a lot of stuff in there about getting perspective. But the bigger idea behind Getting Things Done, which I am really excited about, is just the general idea that you can have a systematic approach to productivity because that ties into the deepest questions that I want to tackle on this podcast about how you can live a life of your own choosing. And the idea of productivity is really that rather than life happening to you, you happen, you choose the way that you want to live. That's what I find so empowering about productivity and taking a systematic approach to productivity it's not just that it's very practical and helpful in terms of many other things that you might want to do whether it's entrepreneurship or just generally getting your life in order but also i think it ties into some of the deepest topics that i'm interested in on this podcast which is about how you can consciously choose and design the kind of life that you want And so that's why I focus so much on productivity. So I'm happy to talk about technical details and it's really important. We do need to address all of the technical questions about how to set up a productivity system and so forth. But the reason I'm excited about GTD is because I'm interested in designing my own life. And you can only do that if you have a systematic approach to identifying what you want, what your goals in life are, and then have a method for how you're going to go about achieving them. And so getting things done, the the approach that David Allen developed, I think is the most useful. I've looked at uh, many other different approaches, but it's not particularly that approach that, it, what, that excites me. It's the idea of having an approach. And I have taken GTD and added on my own things and, and changed around bits that don't make sense to me. I've also done a podcast about that, the things that I don't adopt from David Allen's particular approach. But the idea of having a productivity system which is a sort of higher level idea than just getting things done, uh, the, the book per se, is what really excites me. I read GTD about five years ago, and I liked it. I think I used Outlook as my kind of list manager. And I, um, it, yeah, I, got, I put in place quite a sophisticated um, system that was totally compliant with the GTD rules. And I did it for about six months And I was extremely productive. I found it worked really well. But then I crashed. (laughs) I found I became just really exhausted. I guess it was that plus other stuff. But um, and I've never really since then 
um, done it to the T since. Now I have um, picked up a couple of habits from going through that process. So I have a weekly calendar that I use each each um, week. I use to do lists. You know, at this, you know, first thing in the morning, I say, "What do I want to do today?" So I use lists, which I didn't necessarily do in the past. But um, I, I think what exhausted me was the fact that I found it all encompassing. It covered, you know, everything in my life. So you know, you, you put things into different projects. So I guess after that sh- that spiel, my question to you is: Is how do you find using GTD to cover your, in, you know, everything that goes on in your life versus perhaps using GTD just for a project? So let's say I don't know. Let's say you've got a lot, lots of things to do uh, with your personal finance. So you could just do a personal finance GTD project and then just forget the rest, you know, lists for the rest of your life, just as a way to kind of be more focused and for it not to be so exhausting. That's a great question. Let me, first of all, give you a bit of feedback on what you said about your own experience. And then I will definitely tackle that question too. So the first thing I want to say about it is I think everybody who has read GTD has had a very similar experience to you. I certainly did as well, that I started using GTD and then fell off the wagon. And everyone has done that. That happens because, as you say, there are so many different habits in that book. And so there's so much to do that I think most people find that they start doing it and that you get that rush of initial enthusiasm. And then after a while, life takes over again and and it just becomes very hard to maintain. And I still, to a certain extent, with not so much with my general approach to GTD, but with some of my habits, I still have to work really hard to maintain consistency. And I did a podcast a while ago about the experience of having kids and just that completely changing my daily routine and my habits. And it took me a long, long time to get back to some of the things that I do on a daily basis for productivity, just simple things like making sure that I do exercise every day and making sure that I review my task lists and various other things like that, that I used to have a morning routine and then uh, my routines just got totally disrupted by having kids. And so I completely get where you're coming from. And I also understand your point about there being just so much to take on. One thing I would say about it though, is that if you have a system, then it doesn't have to be GTD if that's what if you're if it's working for you that you are using task lists and as you said doing various things to manage your productivity then I think over time you can bolt on whichever bits of GTD you you find helpful and you've still got a system you've still got a productivity system and as I've said before my I don't do everything in GTD but specifically to your question about your whole life versus work you can definitely find huge value from just applying a getting things done approach to your paid work projects, your your job, basically, whether you're running your own business or you have a job. You could just go into work in the mornings and say, right, here's my list of my work projects. Now I'm going to look at what my next actions are and here's the reference material for these work projects and so on and so forth. You can definitely do that. I find huge value in applying it to my whole life in answer to your question. I find it probably one of the most important things about GTD. And certainly one of the things that sets it apart from a lot of other approaches is this constant focus on your whole life. Now, David Allen has this justification for it where he says, look, if you're not managing all the other aspects of your life, if you're only doing GTD when it comes to your work, your job, then those other aspects of your life are going to interfere with your productivity because you're going to have nagging things in the back of your mind. You're going to realize as you're trying to get things done at work that, oh yeah, you need to make that phone call about getting the plumbing fixed or whatever it is. And you also have that thing that you haven't done in your relationship that you're going to buy something for your partner or whatever, whatever else is going on in your life. His argument is that you won't be as productive as you could be because the whole point about GTD is getting things out of your head. And so you need to get the other things out of your head just so you can focus on work. So you can be really, really disciplined and, and focused because you, you can have the confidence of knowing that you're taking those other, the, the, that you've de- you're dealing with those other aspects of your life. I actually find that what's really powerful about applying GTD to your whole life is that it forces you to be more together in the different aspects of your life. I know what it is like to have significantly neglected my personal life for many years 
when I was just working, working, working like mad. And I know what it's like to have not really asked myself questions about, well, what do I really want from my relationship? Or what do I really want from my uh, family life or, or whatever it is? I know it can be very easy. At least it was certainly easy for me to focus on being super productive at work and not really ask myself what I'm trying to do in the other aspects of my life and is challenging, but I find it ultimately very rewarding because it means that you can live a more purposeful and ultimately fulfilled life in those other aspects of your life too, because you're forcing yourself to actually make some decisions about what you want. What do you want from your friendships? What do you want from your health? What do you want from your relationship and so forth? That forces you to actually address, well, okay, if that's what I want, how am I going to get there? What steps do I need to do to design the life of my own choosing in this respect as well? It's like, if you never think about your health, then it's very easy not to do anything on it, not not to not to actually, you know, stay fit and, and eat healthily and all the other things. But if you're forcing yourself to actually be honest with yourself about, OK, well, what is my expectations? What kind of a life do I want to build for myself? I don't want to be an Olympian. I'm not trying to compete in some higher level in sports or something, but I do want a certain level of fitness and that level of fitness, the level of fitness that I want, for example, is not going to be achieved unless I actually actively do stuff. So that forces me to think about that aspect of my life. And the same can be said of my relationships and so forth. So that was a fairly long answer to your question. But my response is I find it incredibly valuable because all those other aspects of life matter. And I know I can very easily neglect different areas of my life and even if you end up deciding yeah I just want to focus on work and I'm not trying to in this stage in my life I'm not trying to have a relationship or I'm not trying to have an active social life I'm just focusing on work then at least you make that conscious decision and at least then you you have a very uh you can be confident that there are other aspects of your life that you know, your GTD routine, so to speak, might be very straightforward because there might not be a lot of active projects because you might have consciously chosen very limited goals for yourself. But at least you're doing it consciously and at least you're living purposefully in all areas of your life. May I ask you about the someday maybe bucket? Yes. Do you ever get concerned that that gets too big? Yes, but I regularly try and ruthlessly prune it as well <laughs> so what i do is i have the someday maybe list which is a list of potential projects that i might do organized by which part of my life they're in so i've got potential podcast projects potential writing projects and so on and so forth and i store that in evernote as notes but i have a script that automatically exports them as a list as well so i can then just read it as a list but each one I can make more notes on if I want to. And then what I do is each week I read through that list. And if I come to anything on that list that I just think I'm not going to do that, then I just delete it. And there it goes. So sometimes something will sit on the someday maybe list for a while. And then I'll realize, you know, this is not someday maybe. This is never. And then I just delete it. It could get really big if you just keep adding stuff to it. But I review it and the review that I do of it is to say, is this is this still interesting to me? Because the point of the someday maybe list for me is this is a list of stuff that I don't want to forget because I think it could be really cool to do this at some stage. And it could this could be a great, uh, a very beneficial or fun or interesting or whatever it is, intellectually stimulating. But if I'm reading through that list and I get to something that is n not intellectually stimulating nor fun nor interesting nor something that i want to remember then i just kill it um so that's the way that i prune it i find by the way if you do have a someday maybe list it's very much worthwhile organizing it by which aspect of your life is, is it, it's in so for example if i have a whole bunch of it related someday maybe projects 
things, bits of software that I want to learn how to use or things that I want to automate or whatever it is, then if I've got all of those together, that's another way of helping me think through which ones of these are not exciting anymore. Because if you can see the other things that you might do in that area of your life together in the same place, then it provides a hierarchy because you can then see, well, which ones are prioritization. You can see which ones are still more interesting than others. And um, you can just be as ruthless as as, uh, as you need to be to to keep the list small. Have you tried Someday Maybe lists? And, and what's your experience been? Yes, um, I, I do. I, I have a some, I, I do. That's what, one of the things I've kept doing, actually. Uh, and and it's, it's huge. I mean, it's just like kind of, there's no probability assigned to these. <laughs> so a wild out there idea versus, you know, something that I'm probably going to do. They're all kind of in there, but it's someday in the future. Um, I, I like your idea to prune. Yeah. It's tricky because also you want to you want to have stuff in there that's that is super ambitious. And so it would be tempting to say, well, I'll just take off stuff that I know I'm not going to get to. Uh, but then again, it's worthwhile having super ambitious stuff to work towards if you are genuinely excited and interested uh, by them. That's the key criterion for me is just is not it's not so much like, oh, how how wild is this idea? But is this really something that I am emotionally still connected to or or is this just gone? Because obviously, you know, if it is just totally impossible for you to do stuff, then, yeah, it should be killed immediately. But if it's just if, it, if, if it's really I think the good criteria is whether or not you are still emotionally invested in this being something that excites you or whether or not this is just some old idea that you had ages ago that really isn't that meaningful to you anymore. And those certainly happen. There are things that I put on my someday maybe list, which I thought at the time would be interesting. And then life moves on. I mean, you're, you go through uh, changes and, and stuff just becomes not, not so relevant anymore. Yeah, and I guess that kind of ties in. I know this was a debate when I first did GTD, but there was a debate on David Allen, which was seen as a very kind of bottom up approach. So, you know, get dig right into the detail what's what actions need to be done versus the Stephen Covey approach, which was a top down view. So, you know, what are your habits? What's your vision? Start with a vision, then work your way down. And it seems maybe that kind of someday maybe I can't I can never say it. The someday maybe box is kind of where some of the vision stuff can sit because it's quite important because you can just be in there just doing actions and you're not sitting back and thinking about some really cool big ideas you could do. So that's why I'm reluctant often to you know prune it. Well, there is a distinction too, which is that within GTD and I, I think that David Allen does this, but to be honest, I've it's been a while and I've read lots of other books too. So I might've just added this on myself, but I think, you know, he does, he talks about having vision boards. And so another thing that you can do is you can use the someday maybe list as a, just a list of project ideas that come up. I mean, for me, they are very much project ideas. This is something I might like to do. If you're talking about vision for different areas of your life, I actually have individual Evernote pages with the vision that I have for my podcast, for my writing, for my financial life, f for travel and so forth. So I do think there's a, there's a place for vision. There's absolutely a place for vision. And I think that should be the, the place where you are really ambitious. And I've spoken about this before, but many years ago, I had a vision board for travel and I wrote PT, perpetual travel, in the middle of that vision board without really knowing how on earth we were going to do it and how it would actually be how we would achieve it and that was very very um inspirational to me and we did eventually become perpetual travelers we expatriated and you know as i've talked about on the podcast before um, we went to live in panama and we traveled all around and we're now back in the uk and and sort of in a period of life where we're not traveling for the kids but that's still you know a vision that that i had that i ultimately i implemented and that i still have on my vision board because it's something that i haven't given up on it's just something that i know is now going to be delayed um until our kids are much older so i think there's a place for you to have those really ambitious visions but you might find it's helpful to just to have something like a vision board as well as having uh, someday maybe lists, which for me, they're a bit more project related. At least that's how I do it. They are specific 
projects that I might someday do, whereas my vision board is more like, I have no idea how to get here yet, but my vision for this area of my life is, is this. All right, great. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you like this podcast, please show your support by becoming a patron of The Voluntary Life on Patreon. Your support will help to grow and improve the show, and you'll get access to a treasure trove of rewards, including bonus episodes. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to learn more.